So if the euro isn't the place to put your money, then where? We're going to talk about the latest movements in the currency markets. We're joined by Elsa Lignos, a currency strategist at RBC. Elsa, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Morning. You say you're quite sceptical on the euro. What does that mean then for the euro going forward? How low can it go? Well, it depends how bad we're talking about the worst case scenario. And clearly there are some scenarios where Germany, for example, leaves or a number of core countries leave and then the euro utterly collapses. But I've got to say it's not our base case scenario and uh, we're forecasting euro around the low 130s over 12 months' time. I like when you talk about sterling. You say it benefits from its own stale story, therefore it's beginning to look more attractive. Just explain the reasoning about its staleness. Well, earlier this year, sterling was looking bad in isolation. Uh, UK data was slowing down, the rest of the world wasn't doing that badly. Now that the rest of the world is slowing down and everybody's looking pretty bad, the fact that we already know this about sterling makes it all in the price and uh, actually makes it a bit of an attractive punt. Many Elsa, in light of actions by the SNB last week, are looking to the, to, to the next haven and obviously the spotlight is shining very brightly on, on Norway and on Sweden, but you're saying the Norwegian krona isn't a safe haven. Why not? Well, it has many of the attributes of a safe haven, so the current account surplus, the solid fiscal position, but in many ways it trades like an emerging market currency. You know, outside of local hours it's hard to find the same liquidity and you really don't have the depth of asset markets that you do anywhere else. So um, I find it hard to see the Norwegian krona turning around and um, going from trading like a risk proxy to trading like a safe haven overnight. And talking about havens, I mean obviously the Swiss franc was a haven, maybe not so much now. The yen has been a haven as well, but you say that it's hard to find evidence the yen is far from fair value. So you think right now it's, it's, it's fairly priced? Well, if you do look at it over a longer run perspective, Swiss relative to yen is dramatically different. You know, the Swiss at these levels is as overvalued as the yen was in the early 90s. And that's when the Bank of Japan did pursue a policy of concerted intervention to try and weaken the currency. Whereas I think their intervention aims are far more limited at the moment. You know, they will try and manage the pace of appreciation, but I don't think they'll try and reverse it in quite the same way as the SMB. So what's the strategy with regards to dollar-yen? What sell rallies in the dollar against the yen? Well, one strategy we've been pursuing for over a year, and it still works well, we still like it, is actually selling dollar-yen calls. The reason is there's a large body of investors who are convinced that dollar-yen is going higher and that it's going higher right away. Now, we agree with them over the longer term, dollar-yen will go up eventually. But for that to happen, the Fed has to raise rates. So unless you think the Fed is going to raise rates anytime soon, Writing dollar yen calls is still a good option. Elsa, thanks a lot. Elsa Lignos there, senior currency strategist at RBC Europe in London.